Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello, how are you all doing out there? So we've done the tier sixes, we did the tier sevens, we've done the tier eights. It's now time to look at the best tech tree tanks in tier nine. And no, this is not one of them. This is not tech tree. So we're going to do as we normally do. We're going to start with the light tanks. We're going to go to the medium tanks, then the heavy tanks, and finally ending up with those TDs. So, without any further ado, what is the best light tank, according to Blitzstars, in Tier 9? Well, according to Blitzstars, it is this little beastie, the Vickers CR, the British light tank. This one has a 53% win rate. Slightly better than the T92E1, which is the... American light tank, the prelude to the Sheridan, better than the Object 84, the Soviet light tank, and by far better than the Batchat 25 TAP, the French auto loading light tank. So let's jump into a replay and see what this one is all about. Here we are rolling out a jack in the little Vickers CR, the British Tier 9 light tank. I love this tank. I think this tank is fantastic. It's got a great view range. It's got the best DPM of all the lights. It's got the best penetration. Okay, it hasn't got the big derpy gun like the T92, but it has got the second best alpha damage at 350. It's got a pretty decent rate of fire, a pretty good reload. It's got the best aim time. It's got the best dispersion. It has the second best gun depression at 10 degrees. It's got the same speed as all the rest apart from going backwards. I mean, it goes 65 forwards and 22 backwards. 22 back, uh, sorry, 20 backwards. 22 is actually the best and that goes with the T92 and the Object 84. The thing about this tank is it's got a great camo profile, 24% standing still and moving and 5% after you fired. That's pretty decent. It's not the best, that belongs to the Batcher, but it's better than the other tanks out there. It's got a pretty decent credit code efficiency, 90%. That apparently is the best for the tier. So this is overall a really, really nice tank. In fact, it's a lovely tank. It's one of those tanks that it's quite forgiving. I find the armor quite trolly. I find the gun very accurate. I find the mobility absolutely brilliant for the tank. And of course, did I mention the view range? Unfortunately, only 1,697 players are playing this tank compared to 6,385 jumping into the T92. I mean, you have to admit, everybody loves the derp. The thing is, this tank, I think, is a lot more forgiving than any of the other lights. Okay, the T92 is pretty forgiving with its very trolly armor, but I find this one more traditional light and pretty fun to roll out in. The thing I also want to point out on this one is that if you're coming off the back of the FV301, which you need to because that's the tier 8 of the lights, I mean the FV is one of the best tanks you can get in the game. And this one is not stepping down and it's just slightly stepping up and it prepares you for the, the Vickers 105 in tier 10. And that's quite good. I mean, it's it's not one of those tanks that you sort of roll out with and just don't get on. Think Leopard BTA compared to Leopard 1. The other thing you need to remember is that you can really put a lot of damage down. Now, I had three really decent replays, all of them pretty good damage. None of them are wins, funnily enough. Uh, one of them was a mastery. We did 5.6k on Faust and took six kills. Unfortunately, I inadvertently deleted that replay, so I can't show you that. That's the reason why we're looking for the Merlin Jack. It, it is a heartbreaker, not going to lie. We are not going to win this game. But you get to see what the tank can do. I mean, we're already taking two kills. We're at 2.3k. And this is the thing about the Vickers. It will put out a lot of damage very quickly. And at the moment, we haven't lost our hit points. Unfortunately, our team generally collapsed a little bit. It's three against three. It's a light tank, a TD, and a heavy against two heavies and a TD. Uh, unfortunately, their heavies, well, their tanks are... We, we're all tier nine, and they've got two tier nines and a tier eight. But our E75, bless him, he just couldn't hold the corner, and down he goes, courtesy of the M5 Yo. Uh, sorry, the, the E75 out his ground. He took out the M5 Yo, but he goes down to... Waffle tractor. 
Um, yeah, we've done 3.2k, we're okay, we've got all our HP, and unfortunately now this will do. It all goes a little bit pear-shaped. And I made a mistake here. What I should have done, instead of backing away, I should have pushed onto the WZ. WZ. I should have put, pushed onto the WT. That's what I should have done. I shouldn't have let the Emil farm me for what he just farmed me for. That was my bad, my mistake. Uh, the, our WT played a decent game. He, he sat there hoping that I was going to spot them all up. Unfortunately, he rushes down there and their WT gets him. But we've done 36 damage. We're okay in this game. We've taken two kills. We've had a pretty decent time. And I'm just going to struggle with this Emil. And that's my bad. As I said, that was my mistake, my fault. And I, I you know, these things happen in battles. I should have had, like I said, pushed down onto that waffle tractor. The waffle was effectively a one shot. And I didn't. I decided to inadvertently, stupidly brawl with this Emil one. My bad. And it resulted in us losing the game. Wow, that didn't result in us losing the game. To be fair, I mean, we do just shy of 5k there. We did okay. Had we have won that game, that would have been an ace. But it wasn't, and there you go. But it goes to show what the tank can do. 4.7k, 237 dam uh, assistance, destroyed two. We get a second class and a valiant effort. We get some decent credits. And I'm pretty happy with the game overall. Especially considering that our Tiger did zero. So, that's the Vickers. Of the best light tank in Tier 9. What about the mediums? Well, according to Blitzstars, it's this tank. That's right, the standard B. The little medium tank that sits in the EU line here in Tier 9. This one has a win rate of 51.12%. By far the best win rate of all the medium tanks in Tier 9. It has a pretty decent damage per battle, 1,554. Again, that is the best of all the tier 9 mediums and it also has the best kills per battle at 0 0.78 again the best of all of them so what is it that makes six tanks so great well let's jump into a replay and let's have a look here we go rolling out our standard b on normandy now the irony about this tank is when you look at its overall stats compared to the other tanks in the tier this is not a good tank it doesn't have the best dpm doesn't have the best alpha damage doesn't have the best of you know, um, penetration doesn't have the best rate of fire, mainly because it's an auto reload. But all that seems to sort of not give this tank any justice. It's got pretty decent turn of speed, it's not the best. It's got a pretty decent aim time, not the best. But what it does have is the best camo profile. This thing has 28% standing still. 21% moving and 6% after firing. That has a pretty decent credit coefficient at 88%. So, whilst the tank on paper doesn't look that great, it is absolutely pretty nice. It's got the best gun depression, 10 degrees. I mean, that is beautiful when you think about it compared to all the other tanks out there. It's got pretty decent mobility. It's not the best, as I said. It also has pretty, pretty poor armor compared to all the other tanks. On the turret, it's 60, 55, and 55. On the hull, it's 50, 25, and 15. That is pretty, pretty thin. But the irony is this, because it's got a good gun, it's got that gun depression, it can utilize the map a lot better than some of the other mediums, funnily enough. I mean, when you compare, when you compare it to say the Leo PTA, now the Leo PTA is, for all intents and purposes, a paper thin tank, but it actually has a better armor profile on its hull and on its turret than this tank. Admittedly, not the front, but on the sides and on the rear. It certainly has a better hull than this tank. The other thing that you need to realize is this. Like I said, this actually has the best win rate in tier 9 for all the mediums. It has the best average damage. It has the best damage ratio. It has the best average kills. It has the best kills to death ratio. It doesn't have the best average spots. It also has one of the best survival rates, not the best. And, ironically, most players are playing this tank. 3,158 by far more than anybody else. 
So I like the tank. I think the tank is a beautiful tank. I think it's a lovely tank. It's got a great gun. It's got pretty decent armor, pretty decent mobility, and you can get around the map nicely. And you can put some damage down there. It's no surprise to me why this one is sitting at number one, because it really is a nice tank. And I've just done a video on the Pantera, the tank that leads you up to this tank. And that's another tank that everybody overlooks in tier eight. Anyway, that's the medium. What about the heavy? Okay, well, for me, there was no surprise. It was always going to be the Emil 2. Now, we saw in the last video on tier 8 that it's the Emil 1, so it's no surprise to me that the Emil 2 is the best tech tree heavy in tier 9. This has a win rate of 52%, which is much better than the Type 68, which is nipping at its heels at 51%. It's got a pretty decent damage per battle 1726 by far the best of all the other heavies in the tier and it has the best kills per battle but like the standard b this one is a bit of a mystery here we go rolling out on canyon in our little and meal too again this is one of those mystery tanks one on paper this one looks like it should be terrible it hasn't got the best dpm in fact it's got the worst dpm of all the heavies in tier 9. It doesn't have the best penetration admittedly it doesn't have the worst penetration but it's close bottom place it doesn't have the best alpha damage in fact it has the worst alpha damage at only 400. admittedly the type 68 and the conqueror share that moniker but it's still the worst because of its auto reloading capabilities it doesn't have the best rate of fire doesn't even have a really great interclip reload at three and a half seconds. So, what so what's so good about this tank? Because at the moment it doesn't look great. In fact, the aim time isn't that great. It's okay, not that great. The dispersion pretty bad. The gun depression nine degrees, but better than some, not the best. And um, camera profile not the best. Armor not the best. So why is this tank getting so many players winning in it? Because unlike some of the other heavies, this one with its auto reloading capabilities and its stonkingly good turret armor, realistically, has the ability to put a lot of damage down in a support role. And that makes a big difference. It's a very, very forgiving tank. It's a very new friendly tank. This thing also will handle its own in tier 10. It doesn't break into a sweat. And this is what makes the tank what it is. Coupled with that, it's got the super duper speed boost, which allows you to really push this tank to the limit and get a lot of turn of speed out of it. All these attributes really make the tank shine. And that is why so many players are doing so well in it. This is not the most played tier 9 heavy and the most played i think is the e75 or possibly the type 68 but it's pretty well played at 3136 players compared to say the wz111 model 1-4 only has 959 players but it does have the best win rate and that is the thing and the win rate comes because of its DPM. And the DPM is because of this auto loader. So whilst on paper it looks like it's got the worst DPM in the game, it actually has that ability to put a lot of ammunition down very quickly with its auto reloading capability. It's nine seconds it's sorry, it's ten seconds to load that first shell. So in real terms, it should have the best dpm and that's why we're seeing the correlation between the dpm of the tank what it will do in a perfect scenario compared to what it actually does on the battlefield because on the battlefield it has the best dpm it has the best damage per battle of all the tier nines but on paper it has the worst dpm and that's the thing dpm is the ability of the tank in perfect scenario and that's that's the difference. So when you're looking at the DPM of a tank saying, oh, well, this one's got 2,000, this one's got 3,000, and that Emil 2's only got 2,500, it doesn't really tell you the full picture. That's telling you it's got 3,000 if every shot lands and you press the button, you know, as soon as you've reloaded. That doesn't really work. 
the thing about the Emil too is that nine times out of ten you are going to be able to get all three shells into your target in quick succession that's why it has a better damage per battle than the overall DPM of the tanks out there I mean we've not set the world on fire here we've just done 2.5k near is damn it we had a good time it's a tier 10 game and this thing doesn't break into a sweat I love the Emil 2 I think the Emil 2 is fantastic and it's no surprise to me now the thing is a lot of people complain because when the next tank up is the Kranwagen and the Kranwagen itself isn't actually that bad and if you're used to playing the Emil 1s and the Emil 2s you will get used to the Kranwagen so we've done all of them apart from the TDs what is therefore the best TD in tier 9 well it's this tank the Contra Caro 1 Mark II one of the recent EU additions to the TD line in tier 9 before the Minotauro. This tank surprised me and it surprised me because of its stats but forget that let's jump into a game and find out what it's all about. Here are my ruins rolling out in our Contra Caro 1 Mark II the EU lines TD. Now this one took me by surprise why because it doesn't have the best stats on paper nowhere near not even close this tank on paper is one of the worst tanks you can have in tier 9 in the TD line the reason being it's slow it's actually very slow and it only comes with that three round magazine you compare that to the tier 7 and the tier 8 both of those have single shots this doesn't and that's what makes this tank notoriously difficult to play the fact of the matter is this though frontally the armor is just rock solid and if you can manipulate the load time of this tank in other words you don't fire that final third shell then you're going to have a pretty good time in it because it has the ability to knock out a lot of damage very very quickly this penetration whilst not being the best is pretty decent it's alpha damage again not the best but pretty decent the only downside to this tank is its mobility and the and, and, and the load times to be honest with you shells two in three are fine it's that first shell if you unload your clip you've got to wait over 20 seconds for that first shell to reload and that becomes a major problem especially in tanks like this because this is an auto reloader it's not an auto loader so the difference between the two an auto loader uh, will empty all of its shells and then reload the entire magazine this one will empty one shell and then load it so that's the sort of difference as you can see there i'm being farmed a little bit waiting for that second shell to load up now I've got to wait another 23 seconds for the second shell. Wait for, oh, sorry, I've got to wait yeah, quite a few seconds for the second shell to load. And if I fire, which I do, because I'm getting farmed by this chieftain, I've now got 24 seconds to wait. And this is where this tank becomes a problem child. And that's where a lot of players struggle in it. Which is why it took me by surprise why this one has the biggest, highest win rate and the best damage in the tier because i really thought a lot of players would struggle thing is as i said with that stonkingly good armor on the front that's a little bit, that makes it a little bit more forgiving we've done 2.4k here we've knocked three tanks out the game this is by no means setting the world on fire not in this tank but one the, but these tanks especially this one it's very easy to get a mastery in funnily enough it doesn't seem to be the benchmark doesn't seem to be so high which is surprising considering the amount of players playing it, over 10,000 it's by far the most played of all the tier 9 TDs it's the most players I like it it's tricky it's annoying it will make you laugh it will make you cry it's notoriously difficult to play because of that long interclip reload auto reload whatever you want to call it but the gun's pretty decent you know the aim time is pretty decent overall it's not a bad tank i enjoyed it i like playing it oh, that was a bit of a dodgy shot um again we're not setting the world on fire we take four kills 2.6k nothing massive nothing major nothing amazing and you know we did okay in it and that's the thing 
And that's the thing about these type of tanks and these type of lists. It's not always about doing the big damage. I only get a first class. It's not about doing the big damage. It's about winning the games. If you want your win rate to go up, you have to win games. Doing big damage, it's no point doing 10k damage if you lose. It's as simple as that. Well, that's been our look at the best tech tree tanks in tier 9. I hope you enjoyed that. We did the light tank, which is the Vickers CR. We did the medium tank, which is the standard B. We then looked at the heavy tank, the Emil II. And finally, the Contra Caro 1 Mark II, the best TD. I've been Fujit. That has been the best tech tree tanks you can get in tier 9. By all means, comment in everything below. And until the next time, guys, remember, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because that is what it's all about. Having fun, being happy.